let's see what happens. Oh shit, what the fuck? What the <laughs> Mission complete. Well done, 47. Oh! No! <laughs> Don't move. I'll be back with someone to help. Oh, that was... That was good. <laughs> oh, man, that was... <laughs> that was good. That was funny. Oh, boy. That bitch got electrocuted. Hitman 3 was developed and published by IO Interactive and stands as the final entry in a new trilogy for the Hitman series, dubbed the World of Assassination Trilogy. So being as someone who hasn't really experienced the Hitman games before, I was actually put on to the series by my co-host, who has told me many times how great the games actually are. And so I decided to purchase basically the entire series on Steam. And even though I haven't played the older games as of yet, I did want to experience the most recent entries. So I did play through Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 the other week. And just recently I ripped through Hitman 3. And in a nutshell, putting it very bluntly, Hitman 3 in particular... Well, all three games, but especially Hitman 3, is fucking fantastic. I love the hell out of this game. The whole experience and the gameplay loop that IO Interactive came up with for these games is nothing short of brilliant. Their approach to stealth is very seamless, and for the most part, it's smooth. And while the experience isn't perfect, it's not flawless, the good parts, I feel, heavily outweigh the bad. And so, getting into it with the pros and cons, starting off with the pros. The levels are superb in their layout and follow a strict design philosophy that forces the player to take notice of their surroundings and find opportunities which come in a variety of means to assassinate targets. Another great aspect of these levels is their art direction and mission structure, which are some of the best that I've seen all generation thus far. Seriously, going through some of these levels, I was consistently surprised and enamored with uh, the art direction, specifically. Especially the first level, uh, the tallest building in the world, which takes place in Dubai. Seeing the horizon line stretched out and all of the clouds and the details with the shadows that they put in the background is just breathtaking. And it really flows well with the mission structure. Of which, in the Hitman games, the mission structure isn't one-dimensional. There's plenty of different ways to complete a single mission. Even what I consider to be the weakest stage, the fifth stage known as the Farewell, is very gorgeous and filled with unique discoveries in regards to objectives. The two best levels in the game, however, are easily the second stage, Death in the Family, which places focus on a murder mystery that the player can experience firsthand. I felt as if I were playing a video game rendition of Rian Johnson's Knives Out. It was a very fun experience, to say the least. And the third stage, End of an Era which showcases a club-like setting within an abandoned complex, has what I consider to be the best level design from the modern Hitman series, and took plenty of unexpected turns, which helps it stand out from every other stage in the game. Honestly, the level design here is some of the best that I've seen in a long time, and some of the best that I've played since the start of the ninth generation. The story, while delivered on minimalist conditions, gives the player enough information for the plot to be an enjoyable experience. Witnessing Agent 47's mission to take down the ICA is an interesting trek through six different missions which span across diverse regions throughout the globe, from Dubai to Berlin to China and so forth. They did a really good job of diversifying the locations that the player visits throughout the game, 
and not one level feels the same. They're all very different and unique when compared to each other. And just commenting on all three games, I feel that the sandbox map style with IO Interactive's level design, I feel um, works extremely well to the whole Hitman formula. It really works in the game's favor to a great degree. Because the levels, they're not infinitely big, but they're large enough to accommodate the gameplay loop. And they're very dense. They're filled with a lot of different secrets and discoveries throughout. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the level design is probably the best part about the Hitman series, especially with the games from the World of Assassination trilogy. Similar to the previous two games, replayability is heavily emphasized in Hitman 3, which greatly encourages the player to revisit stages to find other unique methods to complete assassination objectives. So the thing that's special about these games is that, you know, it takes around an hour to complete one mission. And then you'll notice that you have a long list of challenges, and that within of itself is no understatement. There is literally a long list of challenges that you can complete. And because the levels are so short, the player is actually greatly encouraged to go back through and replay these levels over and over and over again until they fully mastered it. The replayability in these games actually reminds me of Capcom's approach to replayability with, you know, other popular franchises such as Resident Evil and Devil May Cry. But I'd argue that IO Interactive actually has a better approach to replayability than Capcom because the levels are short enough. They're concise enough to where you don't have to spend hours to complete certain challenges the way you would in a Capcom game, for example. I feel that it's a very effective approach to replayability. It's something that more development studios should emulate. Hiding in plain sight is the method to Hitman 3's design as the levels are dense, filled with many enigmas and various surprises, some of which come in the form of items that the player can collect, others that are spoken by the NPCs in a conversational dialogue exchange either to each other or to the player themselves. And moving on to the cons, even when you think you've mastered a mission, the game gives you a diverse set of challenges to complete. The downside is that these challenges which coincide with the game's achievement list is locked to the always online portion of Hitman 3. While the game is fully playable offline, if you want to complete the challenges and make progress with the achievements, the game forces the player to stay connected to IO interactive servers, which aren't the most stable thing in the world, often randomly disconnecting at a moment's notice during a mission. Also, as another red flag, while the game allows the player to save and pick up their progress anywhere in any given location, there still isn't a reliable checkpoint system that's automated like in most modern video games. If you don't save your progress frequently, you could very well lose progress for an entire level depending on how far you've made it. This is also what's discouraging about the hardest difficulty, which only allows the player to save just one time in a mission. It's very engaging posing in a new disguise to fool the AI and open up new areas without having to worry about detection, which also brings out the comedic aspects of the game in some unexpected ways. Cold storage unit. Useful for preventing cellular decomposition. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay inside for long. No kidding. Hey, there's no doorknob on the inside. Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission, if you ask me. Probably soundproof, too. And good luck getting a phone signal. Follow me. This is our grape crusher. The de-stemmed grapes are crushed into a thick pulp by a powerful rotating cylinder, making each grape quite impossible to ID. Have you had any workplace accidents? What? Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp? You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space, Plasma. Follow me.
This is the facility's grape presser, where the freshly crushed pulp is pressed through a fine filter, leaving only the flesh and skins behind. Much more efficient than the ancient practice of grape stomping, but also less personal. So, hold on a second. However, here and there, detection can become an issue as it can be very easy for Agent 47's cover to be blown, through means that's not always the player's fault. Hey you! Where do you think you're going? Definitely well, you're gonna make your trespass to you. Now don't show yourself around here anymore. This, of course, is a minor inconvenience, as these six missions offer the best experience out of all three games. And I've already made a video discussing IO Interactive's greed when it comes to the DLC and how that's priced, how that's distributed across all storefronts, and especially their greed with Hitman 3's release on Steam in particular. However, this is one of the few cases where I feel that the reviews actually reflected the quality of the game in a realistic fashion, and the quality of the game within its own merit actually outweighs the greed practices of its publisher, something that can't be said for most other modern games that are out on the market. The game is literally that good. Now, am I going to go out and spend a bunch of money on the small DLC packs that they have just to gain access to a few separate missions? No, but I will certainly check out what Hitman 3 has to offer with its supplemental content, if it's within a reasonable price range. And so with that said, uh, Hitman 3 is easily, I'd say, within my top 10 right now for the ninth generation. And it'll be very interesting going forward to see if it remains that way. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back.